<laughs> let's let's start with QBs. I mean, I feel like it's usually a natural spot to start. You know, looking at the mocks, just looking at the the general discourse, uh, it seems to be that there's like a big four here in terms of quarterbacks. Um, we got Willis, Coral, um, Corral, Pickett, or Howell. All four of these guys, I, I see them pretty grouped up together. Willis is going a little bit early, but we'll get to that. Um, before we jump into this, w- would you agree that this is kind of like, you know, maybe it's not, maybe Willis might be in a tier to himself, but would this be like the big four quarterbacks in terms of fantasy? You know, I'm going to add a fifth quarterback to this group of probable first rounders. I mean, I think we call them the big four because they're most likely to be first round picks. Uh, but I think Desmond Ritter has has uh, combined himself into the first round with how athletic he was, uh, you know, getting down to 4-4-40, doing some other stuff, and then apparently looked good in individual drills against air. Uh, but the NFL GMs, the millionaires who make these decisions, they that matters to them. So there's now been a number of mocks, uh, industry mocks, not fantasy mocks, industry mocks for the NFL people that um, – you know, have put him late first round. So I think you should. He's probably needs to be included in the in the big five. So all f- all five of these guys uh, in super flex leagues, uh, of course, you think have a good case of going in the top twelve picks. Absolutely. You know, in super flex, I'm a big believer in like basically QB 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 because even if I mean if you're wrong, so be it. But you can be wrong on receivers and running backs too. But if you hit on a QB, there is nothing. There is nothing even close to the value of a long-term starter in the NFL. He doesn't even have to be like an elite starter. Just Look, at Mac Jones. Starter. Look at Mac yeah. Jones. <laughs> in Superflex, you just need a starter. I mean, you got people scrounging around, tra- trading real assets for like Nick Foles, you know, when you're in a bind, uh, yep. if he's starting in a week. I mean, it's just, it's it's taken me two or three years to realize the QB value in Superflex is just... You have to take QBs. And, and I, I really want to hammer that point home because I think it's an important point, especially for some of the listeners, is like, like just look at last year, for example, Trey Lance and Fields, right? Uh, they were probably put in the top 12 overall of all quarterbacks going in. They like didn't really play or had a bad season, and their ranks did not go down. Like That value stays mm-hmm. static year to year. So you could draft Willis. You could draft Corral. You could draft Pickett. You could draft Howell. You could draft Ritter. Right. And they could not even touch the field in 2022 and still be worth a first the following year. Jordan Love still has value in Superflex. Yeah. He was going like, for first last year. He was going for first last yeah. year. Yeah. I mean, and he's, he, I'm pretty confident he's not good. But <laughs> Me too. If, you, Me too. <laughs> if you're drafted in the first round as a quarterback, like you said, that value is insulated and, and you will have buyers even if next year or mid season you need to trade for a tight end. You need to trade for anything at all. I was telling my buddy who is in super flex and he was picking my brain about what he should do in his rookie draft. And I was like, you can, t-. he had an early pick like first or second pick, you know, and, and I'm like, take a quarterback. And he's like, well, they're not good this year. Right. I'm like, it doesn't matter if he's starting a game in super flex, you can flip him for anybody else who was drafted in the first round, almost guaranteed. I mean, unless a guy goes like Jamar chase mm-hmm. ham, but other than that, you know, you can trade him for any of the other guys you were thinking about. So then you can have that leverage of choosing who looks good, who got injured, you know, not trading for an injured guy, et cetera, et cetera. So well, give I me think the it's quick, QB, QB. Give, give me your rankings of it. So now we've established that it is, in fact, the big five here for you. Mm-hmm. How would you rank the five? Great question. That is that is really the golden ticket this year because uh, there really isn't a consensus. When you look at all the, the actual NFL mocks, nobody seems to know who's going to go one, although Malik Willis is becoming kind of the consensus there. The rushing, of course. <clears throat> yeah, and I think for fantasy, I mean, you you got to respect that. Uh, he's raw. He is not Lamar Jackson coming out. Even how, you know, Lamar Jackson wasn't a great passer and he was still better than Malik Willis, I think, in college. So, you know, he won the flipping Heisman. He was awesome. So I don't think it's that much of a comparison, but still, he's a great, great rusher, strong arm. And, um, and, I, and I think the important point here is, like, you look at Jalen Hurts, and I think people remember that. He was a yes. third-round pick. It was a yes. rookie pick. He was a third-rounder. People remember that. I mean, I drafted him in the third round in one of my leagues. Mm-hmm. I was able to flip that for some serious value. I mean, absolutely. you could argue maybe I shouldn't have flipped him, but that's ne- neither here nor there. But regardless, it's like people see a quarterback that might not be good, might not be raw, might not be a great passer, but the fact that he can run, people are like, that's worth a first-round pick. 
Yeah, and the thing is right now, everyone's trying to figure out who's good. Um, and nobody wants to make a... I mean, I, I'm still convinced in most fantasy drafts, picks are made to not look stupid. Like nobody wants to be the dummy who took the raw quarterback who stinks. But once the draft is over and you start getting camp reports and, you know, there's like with Jalen Hurts, like, oh, he's going to start all of a sudden. No one, I mean, now everyone wants him. So anyway, mm -hmm. we beat that point to the ground. But I do think you got to go Willis one. Um, personally, I think I'm going Corral. Oh, this is a tough. I mean, there's three to me that I'd be pretty happy with landing, and it's Corral, pick or Corral, Howell, and Willis. And I think I would say Willis won. I'm convinced Howell's going to be good. Maybe not elite. Someone tweeted today, "Who's the most pro-ready quarterback in this class?" And you know, I'm thinking through it. I'm like. Why aren't you picking the guy who is literally great from the moment he stepped on the field has never been bad and like also set, you know, North Carolina school records, like every school passing record in the book in three years, he didn't even, you know, he's not even like accumulating over four years in three years. He broke every record. Like I know there's concerns about some of the things that he does, but like, if there's anybody who's ready to just be good, mm -hmm. it's Sam Howell because he's never not been good. I think we're overthinking it a little bit when you know, Corral was great in 2020 and did take a step back this year. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. not as explosive. You know, They didn't have Elijah Moore. That offense looked different. Malik Willis had to transfer to Liberty, and he did good, but he did At very Liberty. good. At Liberty. Yeah, and but he wasn't like historically awesome at yeah. Liberty. Okay, yeah, so that's why those Lamar comps are a little crazy to me. Because I'm like, first of all, he played at Louisville and he was a Heisman. It's like then he was at Liberty and he was good. The, Lamar Jackson had like a season with like 70 total touchdowns. I mean, he was absolutely ungodly. But then you have Co Co uh, uh, Pickett, who had one good season when he was like 24 years old and older than and more experienced than everybody else on the field. And I'm just like. Guys, why are we deciding that Sam Howell is all of a sudden not that good? Like, he's only been good. And go look at his high school stats. The dude in high school had like, like I don't know, like 150 touchdowns or something over like two or something three wild. years. Something just wild. I mean, he was insane in high school too. Like, he's never not been good. Anyway, I just – I think it's kind of crazy that people are like mocking him in the second round – like, what are we doing here? We're going to take this fifth-year Cody Pickett one good season? I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I know he took a step back without, like, five NFL players on his team, but he was still good, and he put the team on his back and ran for a 1,000 yards. Like, mm -hmm. I just think he's good. I mean, yeah. it's like I think we're overthinking Sam Howell. So I would say Willis because the obscene upside, and they're really – I wouldn't say there's a super safe quarterback, so I'm okay going just yep. upside. But I think Howell would be two to me, and Corral would be three, and then there's a big gap. And then I would actually put Ritter at four because of the rushing upside. And to me, Pickett's five because he had one good year as a fifth-year senior. He really wasn't – like, it's not like he was sneaky good. Like, he was just not really good before that. Yeah, I mean, I'm and with then, you on that. Pickett's a guy that I, I do not understand. Anymore. And I don't give a shit about the hand size. If he was lighting up the world with eight-inch hands, that's fine. It, I don't care. But it's one good year as a fifth-year senior. And, and people have said, oh, well, if you did that, you would have missed on Joe Burrow. And I did miss on Joe Burrow. I didn't have any Joe Burrow. Uh, I don't have any Joe Burrow on Dynasty. But... Joe Burrow's good fifth-year senior season was the greatest season of all time. Different story. He wasn't good. He was like uber elite, better than anyone who has ever played the game for mm -hmm. one year. Apples so, and oranges. And I yeah. and I am I I can check the receipts. I've said that. Like I was saying that when he was a rookie, I was like, I'm probably going to. Uh, I did go to uh, if I had the choice. Okay, so I'm not perfect. But what I was saying is like. You have to respect Burrow. He was a fifth year senior, but he like, he was, it's like, I don't care what he did in that one season is enough to override any concerns, but Pickett was merely good, you know, and better than he had been, but I, he's not challenging for some historical season. Yep. So anyway, 
He's my fifth. I'm pretty much out on Pickett. I don't think, uh, based on his ADP, I don't. I don't think I'll have any. 